I'm going to talk about cleaning the MAF sensor in this Ford Focus or changing it, of course. Uh, this is a Mark 1 Focus with the 2 litre ZTEC black top engine, but the principle with MAF sensors is very similar on any car that uses one. Uh, just bear in mind that some Focuses uh, stopped using MAF sensors and switched to uh, MAP sensors on the intake manifolds, so don't get confused if you don't have one. So the mass airflow sensor is found uh, on the air intake duct, uh, usually after the um, air filter box just next to it. Uh, it's pretty obvious with the electrical wiring running to it. Uh, the air intake pulls in cold air from the front of the car, where it goes down here under the battery and then up through the air filter, um, and then on toward the engine where its flow is measured by the MAF sensor. So this way the um, EFI system knows how much air is going to the engine so that it can maintain good tune um, by, by way of fuel mixture. Now I did a, a separate video on the air filter, uh, which is a simple enough job, obviously. Now I said in that, uh, if you have the air box apart, um, you can see the business end of the MAF. And you would want to clean the MAF sensor uh, especially if the upper box and the ducting is at all dirty or oily. That would be a um, good sign to do this job. Now you may be looking to clean it because you have engine problems. Uh, you could be getting stalling on starting the car, uh, lack of power or hesitation, or uh, just unstable idling, especially as the aircon compressor kicks on. And a diagnosis can be a bit involved. Um, a complete failure of the unit may set a, a useful error code and a check engine light, uh, but a dirty sensor would be a bit more subtle. What you can do with a cheap scan tool is uh, look at a few bits of data. Uh, in this case, I'll just show you the MAF voltage from the sensor uh, and also fuel trims. So firstly, uh, directly looking at the MAF voltage uh, while the engine just warms up here. Uh, what you can do is manually mash the throttle wide open and then close it again as fast as you can. Uh, so what you're doing there is going from idle, which is um, a high vacuum state in the manifold, to a wide open butterfly valve, which of course lets in maximum amount of airflow as fast as possible. And um, that maximizes the amount of air going over the sensor. So you should see the graph peak as shown in the red here. Uh, the Ford system seemed to go up to something a little less than 4 volts and then it should drop right back down again. Now as to uh, fuel trims, um, they can give you some hints as well. As a, uh, The way it works is a dirty MAF sensor tends to over-report airflow at idle, uh, which would result in a rich condition and so a negative fuel trim, uh, while they under-report airflow at load. So you would then get a lean condition and positive trims. So you could watch for that. Now I'm not going to go any further into this because it's just beyond the scope of this video, uh, but it could be useful to at least get a feel for that data before cleaning or replacing the sensor and then looking again at it afterward uh, to see if doing the job made any difference. And one other aside, um, MAF systems as opposed to MAP systems are very sensitive to vacuum leaks uh, after the MAF sensor. So if you have problems in this vein, you must eliminate all possible air leaks before deciding that the MAF sensor itself is reading bad. And it's not just external leaks that you should consider because the PCV system may be causing problems. A, a bad PCV valve could be messing up the um, metered airflow after the MAF sensor. I would go so far as to say that if you're even thinking about it, then uh, just replace the PCV valve as a precautionary or service item, um, just because that's cheap enough and it will eliminate that as a possible problem. I have a separate video on doing that with this particular engine. Okay, so on with it. If you replace the MAF sensor, uh, new sensors often come with, uh, complete with their pipe section uh, that fits between the airbox and the intake duct, in which case you need to take out, uh, take this entire piece out. Uh, in my case though, I just, um, I want the best access to the sensor, so I'm going to remove just it. To do that, you firstly disconnect the electrical plug. Uh, that's dead easy, you just depress the tab and pull it off. 
Uh, then you will need a T20 security Torx driver. Uh, you do need the security version with the hole in it uh, to take out the two screws. Then you wiggle the sensor free. Um, it'll be held in by its seal. Just uh, work it a bit and it will come out. Then carefully lift out the unit, uh, being careful not to damage the sensor column. So here it is. Uh, you can see the wires in there. Now this is a hot wire type of MAF sensor, which means it works by using current to heat those wires, which are then in turn cooled by the varying amounts of air flowing over them, uh, which you know allows the airflow to be deduced. Uh, and obviously if these wires are covered in oil or dirt or whatever, then it will not function well. So to clean these, it's really best to only use a cleaning spray. You could get a fine brush or something like that to try to uh, sort of manually scrub them but they're very delicate and you risk damaging them if you touch them at all. So what I'll say is uh, only try that if the sensor is in really bad condition, if you really need to do that. And then in that case, your only other option would be to buy a new one. So you don't have anything to lose. Uh, if you do want to buy a new one, by the way, I will put some links below to this particular Ford part. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, don't touch those wires if you don't have a good reason to. Now you can use different cleaners. Um, you want to avoid anything that might damage plastic. So ex that excludes the likes of carb cleaner uh, and absolutely avoid anything that would leave a film or a residue, which some cleaners do. Now you can get a dedicated MAF cleaner from various manufacturers. Uh, in, in this case, I'm just using electrical contact cleaner uh, because I don't think that mine's in particularly bad shape. So I think this will be sufficient. And you can see here how on the can it states no residue and complete evaporation. So this is obviously also uh, safe to use around the sensor electronics. Then cleaning it is pretty self-explanatory. Just get a good spray onto the wires uh, from all the angles that you can. Uh, let the fluid drain out the bottom. Now this stuff will dry really fast, but uh, yeah, let, let the unit sit and uh, drain and dry properly until all the fluid has disappeared. And then you can put it back in. Uh, again, be careful not to knock it around as you do so. Uh, work it back in so that the seal is in place properly. Then do the screws back up. Finally, reconnect the electrical plug. I'm using here a, um, an electrical protectant spray that's optional, of course. Then once it's all back together, start the engine and uh, check that it runs okay. And if there's any improvement compared to before. And uh, along those lines, if you were looking at scan tool data, then you could now check to see how the new data compares. Uh, here's the MAF voltage in my case. Uh, by the way, without using a voltage oscilloscope, you're not getting very high frequency data with um, these sorts of scan tools. So it's a good idea with these cheap ones to monitor just the one PID on its own because it will maximize the resolution of that chart line there. You don't want to load it up with too many at once. And again, here are the fuel trims. Now, these all look fine, by the way, as they did before. In the case of this car, nothing was really wrong with that. I've just cleaned it as a, as a service item. All right, then that's it. I hope that was helpful. Have fun.